I'm Rosalind Carita, and today I'm at the Customs House Museum. And behind me, some of you may recognize this was the Harvey's horse. This was their emblem or logo. Um, I remember it, and I'm sure not everybody does, but we're here at the Customs House Museum and everything we show you today is going to be about horses. So stay with us. Hello, my name is Kenny York and I'm with Manna Cafe Ministries. Our goal is to feed as many people as much as we can. You can help us with that by just going to our website and, and clicking on Donate Now and become a friend of Manna and see what that's all about. Our phone number is 931-933-0970 and I'll appreciate your help. Thank you so much. Welcome back. Today I have with me Terry Jordan, who really is so knowledgeable about all things art. And we are at the Customs House Museum. Her official title is the curator of the museum. And she's going to teach us about horses. She is the one responsible for this idea and putting it together. Let's start here. Well, great, Rosalind. Um, Encompassing the season of equine, we're talking about the horse as muse. As art changes through time, and you'll see that through these exhibits. Now, when you say a horse as muse, for those of us that need a little help, um, the muse would be the uh, inspiration okay. for an artist's work. And so, throughout time, as you'll see through the things we have in our collection today, um, the horse has been an important muse. Art styles change, mediums change, but subject matters quite often don't. Um, this is a prime example of um, a beautiful art piece with horses, muse, and this is by Gilbert Gall, uh, primarily an American painter during the late 1800s. What's great about this piece is it's a rare piece with the horse as the subject. Uh, Gilbert Gall was known for his paintings of um, the Americana West, and of Tennessee now depictions. He was, uh, he was a Tennessean? <laughs> yes. He, um, he lived out near Fall Creeks Falls on some property that his uncle had left him. So he kind of divided his time between Tennessee and New York City. Um, and didn't you tell me that his uncle, that that was part of the deal? Yes. He had to the live. deal was he had to spend at least five years on the property in Tennessee. Um, and later on, when times were a little tougher, he actually taught at a women's uh, uh, school in McMin in McMinnville area. So and you know, that's part of what makes these so interesting. Uh, when you kind of delve into the family and you get to hear, it, it's, he was more than just an artist. I mean, he was a Tennessee artist. Right. And there's a Tennessee history yes. here. And so this is an unusual piece. This is an unusual piece because it depicts a race scene where the focus is on the horse. Um, and the horse is not just a backdrop piece within the subject matter of right. the work. And so when was this painted? Uh, this would have been the late 1800s. So mm -hmm. this, is, this is quite an old Yes. Piece. Very beautiful. And this is here at the Customs House Museum. And right next to us. Yes, let's come over here and look at a piece uh, by uh, Leroy Neiman. And Leroy Neiman um, was most famous. You'll, you'll see that his style looks very pop artish and very familiar. He was known as the Olympic artist. And I think that's where, <laughs> when you say that, then folks who are looking at this go, okay, now I recognize that. But not only the style, and, and of course that's what you know so much <laughs> about is all, all the details of it. But I think that most of us, when we first look at it, we say, hey, there's Andrew Jackson. That's right. That's right. And it looks a little familiar within the markings. But again, you can kind of see a real contrast in the depiction from the Gilbert Gall piece. Right. That's kind of what we talk about with the, con the changing art styles. But the same subject same matter. Same subject matter. Everything here, the <laughs> subject matter is the horse. Correct. 
and this behind you, uh, completely different. Right. This is a, a this is a lovely watercolor from the '40s, and I think you get that real sense of '40s in the way mm -hmm. that it's depicted mm -hmm. and done. Um, and that's just kind of an everyday scene. And you know, uh, there's a huge difference, obviously, between mm -hmm. the style, but there's also a huge difference in the horse. Yes. I mean, this is, uh, we would say, a show horse. Yes. I mean, really, he was a, a soldier's horse, but. There's a lot of drama here, and these horses, just like these folks, they're working. They are working horses, um, not a lot of bright colors, mm -hmm. just a very subdued lifestyle depiction. These are beautiful. And what do we have? We have not only uh, paintings, but you have sculpture, and this is completely different. Right. Look. Right, um, and this is a contemporary artist, and this is another piece from the uh, Tennessee State Museum collection. One of the great things that we get to do is partner with a lot of other institutions and private collectors, and that always makes things fun. Uh, and we had someone here recently that said, I didn't know the State Museum had all this stuff. So it's nice for them to get things out of the back room, right. too, you know, as an institute, you. You can't bring everything out at once. Right. So and, you it, know, one of the things that Terry does so well that, that makes these collections phenomenal is she has so many contacts, knows folks everywhere, and her ability to put together a show utilizing other museums is really tremendous. I mean, that, that's such an asset. We love that we have Tennessee history uh, and Tennessee art. But we have more than just Clarksville. Right. Uh, and not to diminish that, but, but we have more. Right. And that's one of my goals is to always bring things to our community that people may not get to see otherwise. Right. And, right. and as I said, we have a lot of well-known, famous representations. But then there's also some lesser-known contemporary um, artists. But with ties to Tennessee, it's always great to celebrate the Tennessee right. arts, and we and like so to do that. She is a Tennessee artist, okay. and it is owned by the Tennessee State okay. Museum, yes. The Bird Woman. Right. Okay, and one of the ones that we looked at, when, when you first walk into this exhibit, you see my kingdom for, for a horse, and I think anyone who knows Shakespeare at all knows that that was Richard III. Mm -hmm. And so tell us about, about this. Well, I think this is just a great piece um, it's very formal as opposed to like the Neiman. Um, and I think with the it fits in well with the title of the show. And we always like when we're setting an exhibit, my team and I, we always focus on the visual effects. And I think this is a great piece as you walk in mm -hmm. to tie into the subject matter. Right. the horse. And as you said, mm -hmm. it, it's all the same subject matter. But this is the horse. Uh, there is nothing defining. This is we just, don't know it's a when portrait. This is. That's right. It, it mm -hmm. is a horse. It is a portrait, yes. It's beautiful. So, show us some of the other. I know that we cover a lot of ground in terms of the years, and you, mm -hmm. you have some pieces that are really, really old. We do. We have a very old piece with a very contemporary piece that I think fits together perfectly. Let's take a look. Sure. Um, I, I think you said, and as we walk by here, golly, Tennessee fox hunt. Now, now this is interesting. And this is the same artist as the other sculpture, and, and what I love is the expressions on her animals are perfect. <laughs> yeah. the, this guy's tired on the top. <laughs> the, the fox is tired. These are wonderful. And this is so dramatic. Yes. This. Well, this is uh, from the State Museum, and this is um, a horse from head um, based on the Parthenon horses. Okay. So again, going back to Greek mythology. So when you say based on the Parthenon horses, right, the ones in Nashville, yes. Uh, I mean, the, as this was as, something they used. Right. It would have been a um, a piece that they would have probably made a mold from. Okay. Beautiful. Really dramatic. <laughs> And so now we kind of move over. We, we are heading toward uh, the, the oldest piece, but on the way there's just so much good we have to look at it. Right, a lot of these trophies and cups. Um, you know, it just kind of goes with that sporting horse. Right. You know, the, there's the sporting horse, there's the gentleman's horse, the art horse. Um, and this would be, this is a bank. A toy. Right. A metal toy. These, this is nice, the way it's collected here. Okay. Yeah, I, and these I, are from a private collector, and as I said, that's part of the fun is bringing up things that people own. So you call folks that you know have collections right. and ask them, and then you put this together. Right. And so 
this cubicle really is about the sporting, the sport. Right. Uh, so this piece is on loan from um, a dear friend, the museum private collector, and this is from the Tang Dynasty of China, which was known for a time of a real celebration of the arts, and the arts became a very important aspect of their culture. Uh, so this dates back, you know, many, many years. 618 to right. 907 AD. And right next to it, which I think they were perfect together, um, but this is a contemporary photograph by a national artist, Jerry Adnett. Now, tell me his name again. Jerry Adnett. Okay. Th this is beautiful, and, yes. and that is your style of being able to put those two together. That is beautiful. I love this very, very old piece. Right. And like you said, the horse is the muse. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think we're going to take a break right here and move into a completely different room. But this is the, the first room that you enter at the Customs House Museum and everything is horse. So stay with us, we're going to move into the second gallery. Will you become a guardian angel? The Humane Society has been saving lives and helping families since 1968. We are an independently operated nonprofit organization and the strength of our programs relies solely on donations and grants. Your donation will allow us to save animals from the local county shelter as well as provide low cost spay neuter vouchers and more. All of our programs are geared toward providing families with options that prevent them from surrendering personal or found pets which might otherwise be euthanized at a shelter. Please be a guardian angel today. Hi, this is The Restore. My name is Catherine Norbeck Daly, and I'm the manager here at the Habitat for Humanity Restore. Everything we sell in here is donated. All of the proceeds go to benefit the Habitat for Humanity homes. We take windows, doors, building supplies, cabinets, household goods, and we will pick up. The Restore is located in downtown Clarksville at 408 Madison Street, across from Madison Street United Methodist Church. The phone number is 645-4242. Call us to schedule your next donation pickup. Gallery now? We are, Roslyn. This is the museum's two-story gallery. It's a great space. A lot of times we hang things and a lot of times we do very soft shows. This is kind of an in-between. I think it's fairly soft, but it has a lot of punch to it. Uh, what we're looking at is the work of Eric L. Hansen. He is a Nashville-based artist, originally from California, um, international award winner for his photography. Uh, the pieces in this show are technically called a mixed media piece. And you know, when you say that, uh, when you said he's a photographer, I actually was looking because it doesn't look two-dimensional. It looks right. three-dimensional. It looks like I could touch it and feel rock. Yes, he has um, a, a multi-layered process of creating these images. He starts with photos. Um, the images of the horses he took at the Queen of Hearts uh, farm in Chapel Hill, Tennessee. These are living, breathing, wonderfully beautiful horses. Um, and then he starts layering his processes. He paints on them, he sketches, he layers different images together. Um, and then the end result are these beautiful, shiny, large mounted uh, images. So in his process, that's part of what makes him unique, famous if you yes. will, that, that it's not a picture, right. da -da. Right. it's many layers of photography put together and then he actually paints, but then the finished product is a picture, a photo of all the work that he's done that's dimensional. Right. Okay. And this show is called Blood Rescue. Blood Rescue. Right. Very dramatic. It is. Um, the original concept came from the ancient cave drawings in France. Um, and how the shamans would kill the horses and use their blood to document their stories and um, lives on the cave walls. And what Eric felt he was doing was as the shaman then would take the life away from the horse to tell the story, he is giving life back to these horses, telling their story. Um, these are like some beautiful, breathing, wonderful horses. Right. Um, and, and if you look in the background, I, I think the cave art part, it took me a few minutes to really see it. 
but the cave art, you see the hand, um, and you see in the background here what you know is an animal, I mean, kind of mm -hmm. vaguely. And so that is a depiction, more or less, of right. cave walls in France that, that we have, that, that we see, that we uh, kind of allocate to the Neanderthal period. Correct. Um, and you can see through Eric's, his horse is kind of almost coming out of that horse. So. Yes. It, you, you really can't tell quite the difference. Right. It like it's peeling off of it, mm -hmm. coming to life. This is beautiful. And so he has done a whole series right, of Right, there is a whole series of these images. And we'll look at kind of the transition because a lot of times what does happen to artists, they are influenced by what is going on around them. And as he was doing this project, uh, his focus started to change and morph. So it's, there's still a consistent story, but there's also added dimensions to it as time went on. So show us what happened as he was changing his style. Sure. Some of these. This caught my eye, um, and it just in a very different way. Yes. This, to me, looks like wings, mm -hmm. and, and somehow it has an angelic look it to does. it. It does, and Gretel, you'll see Gretel in a lot of his images here. I think she was probably a favorite horse, um, but she shows up in a lot of them. Okay. This has actually been a favorite uh, image for little children. We've had lots of little girls in particular mm -hmm. running through here all excited about the horses, and this tends to be a favorite if you ask them. Beautiful, spirited, living. And I think within the title of Blood Rescue, you can see in some of the images this sense of family and camaraderie, and I kind of take that out of the title too. Here your cave drawings of the herd are a little more evident. Mm -hmm. and, and these are actual cave drawings. I mean, these are very, very old. These were discovered in France, mm -hmm. and there are other places in the world. Right. But, but that's what's so, that, that kind of draws me particularly. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're right, it does show a family and there's kind of a sense of timelessness. Yes. yes. And here again you can see where he's worked in the texture and he's brought in a little more color than a lot of them. You've got a lot more of the reds coming through. And, and again here's the actual cave art mm -hmm. and I do see that this is a little different because this tail has a more, it, it almost is not abstract but something more modern mm -hmm. about it. And you'll notice though on this horse, it's almost more of the outline of the horse. Yes. It's almost a, a rendering within itself. He's flushed out most of the actual horse and you just see the cave walls. This is a little different. I, I, I can see what you're talking about, but it, but you still have the, the concept of right. the cave wall. This is beautiful. So as Eric was working, um, it became a, a big hot topic in the media, the new uh, regulation controversies going on with using horse meat, the slaughtering of horse meat. Um, and so that kind of got him involved in a new direction. And you'll start to see that as we work around the, the gallery. You'll start to see French menus subtly showing up. Oh, okay. Uh, and I never would have noticed that. Now, see, that's the advantage of having a teacher. <laughs> Uh, I would never have noticed that. Um, so this is a menu that advertises horse meat. Yes, that they sell in the restaurant for horse meat. Mm. Well, I just don't know how to respond to that <laughs> at all. And he's worked it in very subtly, um, which I like. It's not a real in-your-face kind of message, and that's not his way. And you know, artists, everyone takes something different from the art. But so he has started to slowly work that in. Uh, what, what is this right right here? Is this also something that relates to the horse flesh? Uh, this talks about the um, the organs and the insides of the horse. Okay, so more internally mm -hmm. focused. And of course, then when you get down here, you see the you know you've got these beautiful grazing horses. And then you've got the range, the range horse. horse meat. Oh, and that that is almost frightening to me. It the, it has taken on a different. It has. Meat. And what is I, I see a um, 
demand sort right. of superimposed on this? And to me, I think that's just, you know, the, the influence and the, you know, the regulations. He's the enforcer. And where you've got these beautiful horses previously roaming free, they stand out on their own, they're not trapped by anything, even within the mounting of the ark, there's no frame holding them in. And then you start to see the presence of man coming in. Mm. That is heart rendering. And this, I'll show you another interesting piece. I thought this was a beautiful piece with the white horses and with the Pegasus logo, and that actually is the trademark for a horse meat company. Oh, so you you know you look at it and you and you see this beautiful, sweet, soft image, and everybody mm -hmm. thinks of Pegasus, and the winged horse. Mm -hmm. That is disturbing. So it has taken, you're right, it morphed yes. into something else. Now tell us about this right here. Um, this belongs to Eric. Um, Eric started a Kickstarter campaign to raise money to produce these on these large images. Um, and in fact, he was one of the top percent of Kickstarter campaigns um, going on at the time last month. And so these are all people who supported him and um, donated to the making of this exhibit. Okay, to create the exhibit. Mm -hmm. This is beautiful. A and then you you have, you know, this obviously has a whole kind of a theme, but we have so many other things here in the museum. We do. We're gonna move now to another area. Yes. And which area do you wanna take us to? Uh, we're gonna go more to the sporting theme. Okay. And then we'll take you out so to the So a little wild. more uplifting, mm -hmm. we'll go to the sporting theme. So stay with us. Have you ever been hungry, worried about where you're gonna get your next meal? Loaves and Fishes is an organization feeding the hungry. Primarily through volunteer efforts and donations, we are able to accomplish this mission. Loaves and Fishes provides a midday meal Monday through Saturday year round. We provide food to agencies helping the needy through our distribution program. If you would like to donate, get involved, or for more information, you can find us on the web at www.loavesandfishestn.org. Please help us with our mission of feeding the hungry. We are now standing in the sporting section of the Customs House Museum, and we're in here with the race cars and the luge and Wilma Rudolph and the Tennessee Walker. That's right, Rosalind. Um, part of our Tennessee heritage is the sporting event of the Tennessee Walkers, showing the Tennessee Walkers. We have partnered with the uh, National Walking Horse Museum from Wartrace, Tennessee, um, who has loaned us a great collection of fabulous pieces uh, that they own. And we're standing in front of Putting on the Ritz, and this was a world champion. And she, Putting on the Ritz is the name, is of, the the name of the horse. And isn't he beautiful? He is, and when they win the championship, they get this beautiful portrait done. Mm. Um, so this is kind of their standard size. Right. Um, but what's great about this, too, is you can see the little shoes, which I think look like penny loafers. <laughs> um, and one of the things you can learn about these walking horses and from the National Walking Horse Museum is that there are different types of competitions and they're all, the gates are different and they're all dependent on the shoes and they'll have different levels of lifts and that in their feet. So, I did not know that. Right, so there's actually several different categories. So you'll see when you walk through here, there are different standards of dress for the riders. And I see we have some dress right. over here. Tell right. us about this. Um, so Black Magic Woman was a championship horse, and this is um, his rider, uh, Judy Tillett. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so this and would be she's a Tennessean. She is, and this would be what she wore, um, as you can see, when she uh, rode him in competition. Okay. This is also his blanket. Black Magic wants, Woman. Right. From when he was the. Uh, what an incredibly shiny coat. Beautiful horse, isn't he? Mm, Gorgeous. Beautiful. And so these are these, the awards right. that she won. Mm -hmm. um, and these are just, uh, you know, besides being just the famous diva horse that you see there, um, putting on the Ritz, also they do public appearances and that. And this was at the Vols game 
and that is putting on the Ritz with his owner. Ah, so they did sort of an exhibition. Mm -hmm. and so what show horses in many ways. Right. Ah. And then what we've also displayed are some of the different types of awards and trophies that riders win. Um, this is a great horse called Ghost Walker who has won all these different types of awards, but the, we wanted to give you kind of an overview mm -hmm. of the different types of styles and the competitions and the different types of prizes that Beautiful. they accumulate. And then we have, so the Ghost Walker is a different horse. Right. And it, what year, um, do we have any idea? Uh, it was a varied years, um, multi-champion. Okay, um, 2012, 13, and 14. Right. So this is very recent. Right. But what I like about this graphic is you can see um, the different dress styles. When I was talking mm -hmm. about the different styles of competition, mm -hmm. you can see the casual, you can see the more formal English mm -hmm. dress. So depending on what they're competing in, right. the riders dress differently. And you know, that's something I didn't know either. And, and some of these pictures, these look very Western. I mean, they've got yes, a, got that's a cowboy that would be the cut, There's a country pleasure um, category. You know, I had no idea of that. And, and I actually always was, think it's very, of this. Right, and when they, they're jury, they're actually jury, there are people who just watch their feet. There are people who watch, who do their counts of their gates. It's all, it's actually a pretty uh, hard process um, to jury. So we have an example of many of the awards as well as Okay, here's a completely different right, horse. Right, right. So this is this is Frank White, and this is a different type of horse and, um, competition. And you can see he's still the walking horse, but with a little, um, what I call a little hack in a carriage. Right. This is beautiful. And this was 1993, ridden by Frank White. So this one, a little bit older. older. And then we have some newspaper clippings. These right, are just kind of, yes, just kind of, you know, a bit of history people can read about. Uh, and then one of the things that we like to do at the museum here in Clarksville, and the majority of our sports gallery focuses on local sports uh, personas. Right. This would be Betty Corlew, who had two National World Grand Champions. Um, and, the, and they still have horses today. She still has these horses out now on the farm. Now that's phenomenal. Two. Yes. National champions. Yes. And are these her awards? They are her awards. Okay. And on there she is with the two horses. Oh yes, this is beautiful, beautiful. And then uh, th these are great. Uh, we can see uh, the Corlews. How wonderful! Nice story about right. them. This is great. And I love that it is the local history. Right. I like to do a little bit of, we like to keep it local. Larson has a very rich culture of um, competitors. This is your history and your heritage. And today we have been looking at the exhibit at the museum. It's the Customs House Museum. And Terry Jordan is the curator. And Terry is going to tell us how you can come out and see this exhibit what it costs, what days that it's open. So tell us, Terry. Roslyn, we are open Tuesday through Saturday, 10 to 5, and Sundays, 1 to 5. We also have our volunteers that run the model trains on Sunday, so that's an added draw. So you can come on down. Um, we have free second Saturday of every month. Okay, so free second Saturday of every of month. Every mm -hmm. month. And then our regular price admission is $7 for adults, 5 for senior citizens and students and uh, 6 to 18 is three dollars. This is a great opportunity to spend some time with your family doing something. You know, so many times we say, you know, what do we want to, what do, we want to do? What can we do? This is a great place. Rain or shine, you can come to the Customs House Museum and second Saturday it's open free from what 10 time? to 5. 10 to 5. Second Saturday free, 10 to 5. And we'll run those dates and, and hours on the screen. But this is your history and your heritage. Call 931-648 1060 to find out more about the Girl Scouts.